beautiful morning on the Moynton Peninsula, about a 50 minute drive from the centre of the Melbourne CBD. I'm fishing the pier. The target species, garfish. I got all the gear, it's going to be fun. So, the toughest decision of my day where do I actually stop and fish? It's a big pier. This looks like as good a spot as any. Now today the target species is garfish. I got my bucket, I'm gonna sit on that. I got this little esky full of burley, I got the floats, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well hands up, if your name's Paul, you packed everything, left it at the back door this morning and actually left some at the back door. I have just realized that my tackle bag is sitting beautifully behind my door at home, not on the pier. So, I don't have enough split shot. I've only got two hooks. I'm struggling a bit. But this is the reason I love fishing so much. I went over, asked someone, hey, any chance I could borrow a bit of gear? I've got pliers, I've got sinkers, I've got hooks. I'm good to go. Thank you very much. Stale bread is every fisherman's friend. What I'm doing here is using a bit of stale bread to fill my burley pot. I'm then gonna fill that with tuna oil and the bread will basically act like a sponge and hold the oil and slowly release it and bring the guards to my feet. So I add my tuna oil, pour that in, give it a good soaking, put the lid on, drop it in, and the guards will come. It's a big pier when you think about it. You really wanna do everything you can to attract the fish to where I'm sitting. And any time you fish on any structure or in a boat, that is so crucial. There's fish there, I can see him. There's a little bit of burley in. Watch the float. There he goes. Here we go. Oh, that's a beautiful little fish. Look at that. Now the fight times, hey! The fight times on these fish aren't long, but the fish are long and skinny. And that looks like a beautiful little male, and except his beak is sitting the other way. And how good is it? You can come down your local pier, catch a fish like this. It's all about setting that trap, making sure every single thing is right, and then the fish start coming in. Opposite the park in Mornington, you may see a memorial. It is to commemorate the lives of 15 young Mornington footballers. They went to Mordialloc, about 30 k's down the road. They decided to sail back after a drawn match. No one knows exactly what happened, but the ship was lost, and so were the lives of 15 young men. <laughs> So the gun bait today is a thing we call gents, also known traditionally as a maggot. Now maggots are fantastic bait because they move around, they're full of protein, and the gars love them. But there is a key to putting maggots on properly. You've just got to go through the blunt end, just nick the back of the skin there. You don't want to hurt them too much. You just want them to move around like that. That is what the gars love. Go, mate. Look at that. These fish are just so much fun. And not only are garfish really, really good to eat, they actually make sensational baits for all your predators. You catch them in every state of Australia, they're all different species, but they all taste pretty good and big fish like eating them too. With garfish, hook choice is really, really important. I've gone for a VMC long shank here today, ultra fine wire. The better for the long shank, you can physically get it out of their mouth nice and easy. If you use the short shank hooks and they swallow them, you've got to continuously re-rig, and you'll find the guards will come through in school. So you want to be ready to get back in the water as quick as you can. Because I'm catching a few fish, I need some water in my bucket, and this lovely lady has been shopping at Tackle and Moors, and I like her. Bucket, string, that's how we do it on the pier. Thank you. I've got a brand new best friend. Anytime you go fishing, whether it be land-based or boat, 
preparation is the key to success. I spent two hours last night getting all the gear ready, and when you hit the pier, really important you have the stuff you need. First and foremost, a comfy seat. Seriously, you don't want to be standing here all day. Burley in a good container, always important, and having a scoop like this, you can throw it, just like when you throw your ball for the dog at the park, gets the burley out to where the fish are. No point putting all your feet. Then, of course, good bait, a nice outfit, and you're ready to go. How's that? Those fresh maggots did the trick just beautifully. And there's another magnificent little gar. They're coming in thick and fast. That is a cracking fish. Well, how pretty is a southern garfish? Just sensational, as we call them, little mini marlin. They are so sweet and good to eat. The scales literally rub off with your finger. If you look at the anatomy of a fish, you'll learn a lot about it. You'll see the caudal fin down here. The bottom lobe of the tail is larger than the top lobe, and that's so these fish can get out of the water and jump. It helps give them lift. And as you can see, they've got a bill, just like billfish, but the gar has the bill on the bottom, not the top. They're cereal spawners. They spawn over weed beds from around October through till March. I've got to say, they are gorgeous little fish. Happy days, sweet days. <laughs> Good to see you, mate. It is so awesome to get down the pier and just meet some of the locals. And what I've found just heartwarming is a sense of community down here. Every single person knows each other. They come down here nearly every day and they literally use this as something. It's a getaway. It's a place to go and be social, talk to people, find out what's happening in town. And they actually call each other regulars. He's a regular, he's down here. And uh, the friendship and the bond is absolutely amazing. It's really, really good. And it proves that fishing's more than just catching a fish. <laughs> Beautiful. Eat it. There he goes. He's looking at it. Yes, got him. <laughs> They're going off. A school of guards obviously come through. Oh, mate, next to me got one. My brand new best friend got one, and I got one too. How much fun is this? This garfish rig is a little bit technical, but not that hard to do. Basically, we've got a float there, a strata float. It is connected just by the bottom of the float, and each side of it has a small split shot that holds it in place. That runs down. I've got four pound max of chameleon line to a small swivel. The swivel is then connected to four pound fluorocarbon so the guards can't see it. And you'll see not one, but two split shot there. They cock the float, and cocking the float is getting it to stand up nice and tall with just a bit of the float out of the water because you don't want too much resistance. Then on the bottom, a tiny long shank VMC hook. It's super fine wire, super sharp, and it's easy to get out of the guard's mouth once you got him hooked. This is a crazy amount of fun. For old Jets at school today, but on the weekend, guess what we're gonna be doing? Seriously, to come down here, to meet some awesome people, to have to think about your fishing, try different things, and then to get good results, it is just awesome. Yes, got him. That is just too cool for school. And this is a tiny little garfish. Look at that. Seriously, I live on the shores of Port Phillip Bay. That has snapper written all over it. I might keep him in the freezer for a week's time. Well, this stuff here is pure tuna oil. I like to get my little maggots there, drop them all the way in, get a few split shots in there as well. Just add a bit of scent. Look at that. That'll fire the fish up when they're just not quite sure. asked me before why they call maggots gents and I think they do just because it sounds a lot better. They are protein packed fish love them and believe it or not in cold countries they don't move a lot so fishermen actually stick them under their tongue to get them nice and warm so they wriggle around when they hit the water. Lucky it's about 20 degrees today because I ain't doing that. Just thinking about it. They're darting around everywhere and it's amazing just how many there are down there. Gotcha! He was just playing with that. He wasn't going hard at all. The float actually didn't go all the way under, but I could see he was interested. 
And it's amazing that a fish that small, in about six metres of water, I can physically see it with the spotters. That just goes to show how good these things are. Well, and that's a nice little feed. I think it might be time to have a cook up. So we've taken the garfish back from the pier and we've used salt water to clean them. Always use salt water to clean saltwater fish, freshwater, freshwater fish. And that is a trunk of a fish, basically the body with the head removed, gills and guts removed, tail chopped off. And you can see there we've cleaned all the black internal lining with a toothbrush. All we do is lay that down on the cloth like so and grab a bottle. And you'll hear, this guy really needs to see a chiropractor now. All I'm doing is rolling up and down literally cracking that backbone away from the ribs. Once it's done a few times that way, flip it over, roll the other side, and this is going to be very, very tasty. This is how you butterfly fillet a garfish. And once you roll it, you literally grab the end of the backbone and slowly pull it away from the flesh, which will leave you with a beautiful butterfly fillet of almost boneless garfish. The ribs will just cook away. So I've got a plate of butterfly gar fillets. I simply get some lemons which I've cut in half and cover these things in lemon juice. The thing I love about this recipe, it's not all about eggs and flour and all that other stuff. It's just natural lemon juice, a few breadcrumbs, few herbs. And this is what is going to stick our breadcrumbs to the fillets. Now I get rid of the pips. That is nice and juicy wet, straight onto the breadcrumbs. Oh, look at that, seriously. And then straight from there into the hot oil. Stop it, how good does that smell? Oh, oh. Well, they say the proof's in the pudding. I had a cracker day in the morning here today, met some beautiful people. Desi, this is your garfish recipe, and I'm gonna tell you, it smells amazing. Time to dig in. Look at that, seriously. Desi, the flavor, the crunch. Get down to your local pier, meet some awesome people, catch some fish, because that's what it's all about.